G'day. Today I'm talking about calibration in the Walkira QRX350. The instructions are very clear and very detailed. And for somebody who's been flying multi-rotors for quite a long while, it seems surprising that so much emphasis is placed on the calibration of the accelerometer and the gyros, which I guess I calibrate once a month with a standard quad, and the compass. Now, the compass, yes, I can understand that. That is different. And traditionally, electronic compasses do need swinging. But why does this one have to be swung in addition to the horizontal, your axis, which is what everyone would expect, also to be swung in the pitch and the roll axis? Seems weird to me. But then there have been a series of accidents, and I guess those accidents could have happened to people who didn't take the instructions seriously. So you're damned if you do, and you crash if you don't. Let's have a look at the way it's done according to the textbook. So here we are, ready to go. The walk here on the workshop floor with a battery. Not just any old battery. It's fully charged and it has been checked that the cells are equal and have been for several flights. Marked with an A, it's performing well, but we've also been keeping a log of the flight performance. And on the last three outings, it has GPS locked twice out of three attempts. I'm very interested in why it is that sometimes you achieve lock and sometimes you don't. Okay, with the transmitter in position and turned on, it's beeping. That's because the throttle isn't in the fully closed position. Good safety feature. Checking that the switches are all off, most critical in the case of the GPS switches. The trim, yes, elevator trim is forward, just taking that back to the neutral position. It is important for trims to be neutral when calibrating. Plugging the battery in. Okay. The aircraft is now checking its systems. The green light will stop flashing in a minute and then go out. Stopped and out. Ready now to proceed with calibration. Throttle high, back stick down and left. See the fast flash? That's indicating that the calibration for the compass has started. Rotating forward, rotating on the roll axis and rotating on the yaw axis, 360 degrees each. And then we sit and watch the flashing light until it stops, indicating that the compass calibration is complete. Interesting question as to whether this should test should be done more slowly. I suspect we could do it much slower. Throttle down and bottom right, back stick right, and that's the gyro calibration. Throttle up, back stick right, and that's the accelerometer calibration. Throttle down, arming, armed. Test throttle, or yeah, it's running, that's fine. Okay, this aircraft is more or less ready to fly, or it would be if it were outside. I just want to demonstrate fitting the battery. It's tight fit. The battery goes forward, then the balance plug goes in to the left, and then the plug major slides in upwards diagonally to the right, and the wires slip into the bottom, and the door closes with a very satisfying snap, but it's a snug fit. Looking at the startup sequence again, the transmitter hasn't locked on because the throttle is not fully down. Correct that. Now the transmitter's live and the switches are being reset. Checking the trim, the elevator trim is wrong. Recenter that. Okay, now we're ready for the calibration. You may have noticed two comments during that demonstration. The first was related to the battery. I haven't achieved GPS lock every time I've attempted it. And I don't know why that is, because I've never attempted a GPS lock when I wasn't getting a clear seven satellite count. I'm working on that. I don't have a clear answer. The other comment I made was about the compass calibration. I think we can afford to take that much more slowly. I think it's too hurried. I don't think it should be as rough as that. There's 30 seconds. I reckon if I completed the three revolutions in 20 seconds and let it stand for only 10, maybe I'd get a better GPS lock when I go for it. Hmm. Food for thought. I'll keep you updated how I go with that. But the point the instructions make is that you do not need to do these calibration checks on every outing. Yes, if you are 
at a new location. Yes, if this is the first flight of the aircraft, and yes, if the last flight ended with a crash. Okay? I have been doing it on every outing, and I clearly have been wasting time when I could have been enjoying myself flying, which is what I like the best.